A lot of guys are using pans, treadles, whatever they want to call them for their mink boxes. They're got different ways. Some guys use circle triggers. Some guys run a wire between the, the V of the trigger wires. What I'm going to do is go for a treadle system, a little bit different and cheap. Instead of putting wood over the pan or, or a metal pan, I'm just going to bend the V wires. You can see that right there. Bend my trigger. Safety's on so it ain't going to go off. Just in a 90 degree bend, I take some corrugated plastic. I spray paint mine black, whatever you get. Then you bend them a little bit together so there's a little pressure on them. Slide it right over and it sits right on there. Now, what that does is it gives you a pan to set your trigger off as opposed to your normal conventional way. Set that back. So what you do is get some political signs, something like that. They're free. Grab them the plastic corrugated cardboard, cut yourself out some squares, whatever size you want. You want them to fit in between the jaws here. That way when a mink comes along, steps on them, trips the trap, and you're good to go. Let's put this safety over here. Now, another thing that I'm going to do is, it's a little different than a traditional mink box that a lot of guys use. Second. Now, a lot of guys will just set the 120s or the 110s right on the front of the mink box. This one I had set up with an MB Connie bracket. Get that out of the way. What I'm going to do is, because now the dog on these is going to be on the bottom. Take these safeties over. you got to watch when you're flipping them because your regular safeties are going to slide off. So I like to push them all the way up towards the eyelets there, keep them out of the way. So let's take this off right now. Now when you flip this over, set it. Be pretty sensitive actually. You gotta watch you don't snap yourself. Now if you just lay this down in there, I like to face it out. Just preference. It's gonna wobble around on that dog there. Not a good thing. So what I do is take a piece of pallet that I got laying around or a little piece of wood and make these blocks to rest the trap up on. Now when I take these blocks, I'm going to lay them in on the front here on either side. Trace out where you're going to put them that way you know. And I take a 5 16 drill bit. I'll mark out. I know they're going to be right there. And I'll lay my trap down. Let's take a piece of it as a mark ready. When I lay these down, they're about three inches long, about a half inch by a half inch square. You lay them down. Trap's gonna rest right there. I'll just take a pencil and just mark where each of the jaws meet, all four spots, all four contact points. That way I can take my blocks. Once I'm done, I'm going to hold them together, throw them in the vise, take a 5 16 drill bit, drill these holes. That way when it's laid out, there's a nice little recess, a groove for them jaws to sit on. They'll rest right in there, just like that. We'll just tack them down, make sure they fit. What you got to do is make sure you use the same notch on your dog every time. If you don't use the same notch on your dog, your jaws are obviously going to spread closer, farther apart. So some, sometimes I'll drill an extra set of holes if I want to do a second set on that dog, depending on the situation. But I'll take a couple finish nails here. Once I know they're in place and everything lines up, let's set this off right now. Go off on me. Get the hammer out the way. I'm just going to tack these down real quick, that way they don't move on me. 
That's why I always take a pencil and make lines where I'm going to weave everything. That way I know it, it bounces around it. Take it off, I'll go right back. I know my trap's going to line up. Set that down. Just a couple of finished nails. Hold them right in place is all. Split on me, so I'm going to have to make another one. We can always try and tack this one down, see if it stays. Just drill these holes first. So now we can do, again, we'll set this trap real quick. that first notch on that dog there that's where I have the trigger wires bent to keep level so you don't want it on too steep or too funky of an angle again I want to watch my safety just to, I don't want to snap it on myself the trap sits right in them notches keeps it from wiggling around too much nice spot make to come along I keep my springs down just for a little extra support what happens is, now the only problem is you get this little bit of a gap, I say from the ground to the trap pan, about two and a half inches from the top of that, about an inch and a half. You can either bundle up grass, you can throw a rock there as an extra step for a mink, but when they come up, they're going to want to look into this, they're going to see, you got some bait in the back. I don't know if you can see my hand through there. I got wire screen on the back, keep the air flowing. They can't get it from the back. They can work it, but they're not gonna be able to get in. They're gonna have to work around this side. So they're gonna have to eventually set that trap off. They're gonna step up there, bam. Now what's nice about these is wood tends to break, rot, get all beat up. Get these free. Pick them up off the side of the road, wherever you get them political signs or them advertisements. You can even get a piece from the, uh, I think the dollar store sells a sheet of them. This one happened to be yellow I had laying around inside. I just spray painted them black. Cut out these squares. And I got I'm about two and three quarters wide. And three and a half inches on that one. That way, it slides right in there. The triggers are bent a little bit apart. You squeeze them together. That way it's going to put some outward pressure and hold that right there and it swings free in between doesn't hit either side there it's got plenty of room it's light I don't think that's going to be any kind of problem for any mink stepping on that that's the way I do mink pants and the way I set my mink boxes up that way the dog doesn't interfere with the bottom and the trap can function fine thanks for watching